All right, shall we have a look at next the pieces in the, just the regular Hong Kong auction, like the uh, multi-owner auction? Yes, the various owner sale on a 26, um, I was just gonna say September, but it's actually April, isn't mm. it? So yes. anyway. Um, yes, okay, so I just brought a, a couple of highlights. Um, I went, for, uh, sorry, following on from the repeating pocket watch, mm. I have two repeaters by Patek Philippe. One, mm. 1950, the other made just a couple of years ago. Mm. I wanted to show you just the, the difference in how, A, in terms of size, complications, but also the quality of the repeating and mm -hmm. how, you know, the manufacturing of P Patek's minute repeaters, how far it's come, mm -hmm. um, and you'll, you'll see. I mean, um, so I'll start with this watch. Uh, this is a 2524, which um, is quite an important watch. Um, you'll see that it's, it's sort of re relatively small, um, but it's known as a 2524. It's not a 2524 dash one, it's a 2524. Um, the dash one um, is sort of the most common re minute repeating wristwatch by Patek. There's maybe 30, 30 that they made. They made mm. in, in uh, yellow gold. They made in all metals actually, yellow gold, platinum, pink gold, and white gold. You um, mean like a vintage Patek or even vintage a modern Patek? Patek Sorry, also? vintage Patek. Okay. Um, yeah, vintage Patek. Because I, mean, I assume like something like this, they're not many, but there's probably more than 30? Uh, oh yes, I mean I think at the moment in uh, Patek's uh, current production there's over 14 different models. Okay. Um, and as everyone knows, you know Patek is really known for their minute repeaters. Mm. Um, they are the, the best, the greatest sounding um, repeaters made by any brand. Mm. Um, so, so, so this 2524, um, so made in 1950, there are three known. Um, each of them are different. Um, and what's unusual are these sort of long sort of spider-like lugs, you mm. see, coming sort of downturned. Mm. Um, and this watch is actually quite a famous watch. Um, it was first discovered uh, in a French auction in the early 1990s. Mm -hmm. um, it was then offered again in, uh, by Anticorum in 2002. And in 2002, it made 520,000 Swiss francs, which was wow. very, very, very high um, at that time. Um, and I was, I was still doing this back then, if you can, um, I mean, that's when I started in 2000. Um, so yes, it feels like a long time ago, 20 wow. years ago, <laughs> anyway. Um, so, so yeah, so we've got the 2024. Now, each of the dials are different. Um, here we've got the, uh, you know, it's the Roman indexes at the quarters. Um, we have a hard enamel signature. Um, the, the other two known are in the Patek Philippe Museum. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all different. So, there is one with uh, subsidiary seconds, mm -hmm. and there is a, the other example is with Arabic numbers, um, but the slide, you see how our slide is going down, mm -hmm. there, the slide on that watch is going up. Hmm. Um, so. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, if you look at the modern one, huh? Yes. They, they reversed it. Exactly. That's so interesting. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, it's amazing. And um, if I just like try and focus it in here. Um, so shall I repeat it? So One second, let me just here. pull out. At some point I need to invest in more, more microphones. All right, please. <laughs> okay. No, it's four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll advance the uh, time on a bit so we can have some quarters as well. <laughs> And maybe some minutes. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but there is a trick with minute repeaters. Yeah. If you get a piece of paper and put it, stick it underneath and repeat it, it amplifies the sound. Mm. So shall I try it? Try it, yeah. Time? Okay. It probably won't work now, but anyway. Um, so if I... All right, try and get it centered on the camera too. Okay, okay. So maybe I'll start, I'll repeat it first. Amazing though, like that piece of paper made a huge difference. Yeah, um, and also, you know, being in the auction business um, for a long time, clients would come in, would be showing the watches over the cases, um, and a way to amplify it, we would sometimes just let it rest on the glass case, mm. and that even 
will really amplify the sound. So, mm. um, but yeah, but it's extremely rare. Um, the repeating, you know, it, it, by today's standard, it, it sounds pretty um, basic. Um, but this was groundbreaking at the time, um, and uh, it's very, very subtle. Um, I have a cool story about a mini repeater, actually. Um, when I worked in New York, um, I went into a, a, a retailer in Connecticut, mm -hmm. um, and we were doing a valuation um, on some watches, and, he, and the, um, the salesman or the, the manager said to me, come here, quick, quick. So I, I went into his back office, and he produced a tonneau-shaped a uh, 1920s uh, two-color gold uh, Patek Philippe repeater. Hmm. And he said a 90, uh, back there, a 90 year old lady had bought it in for service. Um, and her parents bought her the watch when she was in her teens um, because she was, was blind. Um, and she wore the watch every day um, and had no idea on the value or anything. So it was just wow. you know, kind of nice. And I don't even know what happened with that watch. But, but yeah, so it was um, in Connecticut, this old lady with her Toronto form of pizza. That's the great thing about the States. She, you know, so many watches and so many stories. Good grief. Uh, that yeah. is crazy. Yeah, so. Amazing, though. <laughs> I love that story. All right. And well, then, thanks for showing us that. Yes. So, okay. So, in, in contrast, we have the 5217 um, with diamonds. So, ne this watch has never been on, on the market before. And when I say this watch, this reference has never been on the market before. Um, it is a minute repeating perpetual calendar tourbillon and with retrograde date. Obviously with diamond, uh, a striking diamond bezel and lugs. If you look the... Um, wow, even the buckle has diamonds too, huh? Yeah, you don't want to lose this buckle because replacing this, you could buy um, many other vintage watches. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, so it's, it's incredibly... Uh, we have the tourbillon mechanism in the case back, but just if I repeat... Let's set the time so that we get... Uh, Surprisingly, not a big movement either, huh? No, no. I mean, that's the, the great thing about the brand. Look, I mean, it's incredible. Oh, sorry. I need to watch this. So this is basically a 50-50 with a tourbillon and with a repeater. Uh, and diamonds. And diamonds. diamonds. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So this, the 5217 is the diamond version of the 5216. The 5216 is the upgraded uh, reference of the 5016. Mm -hmm. Now the 5016 for many years was the most popular watch on the market. Hmm. They took, um, they, the prices softened a few years ago, but they, they really seem to be coming back with a vengeance. Um, I think all of those contemporary classics from you know, mid 1990s to early 2000s are really gaining in popularity. Um, it was, I think, a, at the point, it was their most complicated um, uh, watch in production, the mm. 5016, and it was replaced by the 5002, the Sky Moon Tourbillon. Oh. So, so yeah, so this we is... we got to get one of those uh, yes. on the show at some yeah, point. Absolutely. That would be amazing. And they've skyrocketed in value. Yeah. Um, you know, so... Uh, I remember seeing one at, like, a secondhand shop in mm, Japan, mm. and, like, no one was touching it. No one was interested. No. No, I remember um, when I first started um, doing this in 2001... Um, Sotheby's in New York, somebody consigned a black dial Skyman Tourbillon. Um, and I'd never seen it before and was just like, wow, what is this? It's double dialed. And, and, and um, back then the retail price, I think it started at 600,000 um, and they put an estimate of 1.2 million um, and they didn't sell. So it was sort of embarrassing, but anyway. That is a bit embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> um, so if I show you... Um, yep. Give me one second, just pull this down. Okay, so just listen to the difference. Um, incredible. Beautiful. Patek really do make the best repeaters, I think, in of in the business. Um, so, so yeah, so this, and surprisingly, well not surprisingly, but today, these sort of larger sized diamond complicated Pateks are so popular. We have this, oh, oh sorry, this is an auction at, at I think six to 10 million. 
Um, and I, I would imagine it should you know, really far exceed uh, the high estimate. Um, nice, huh? I don't think you'd wear it though, Mark. I can't I, I, it's not, it's really not, style, it's not quite it? my style, but I, I appreciate what it is. Mm. It doesn't it's, really go with the Vicuna. Um, I, I don't think I have enough Vicuna in my wardrobe. Hey, that's a nice wear. watch you're wearing. Yeah, it's all from Sotheby's. Wow, so that's the ultra thin AP tourbillon from the 80s, typically found in yellow gold. But this is white gold, right? It's plat. Oh, it's platinum. Plat with mother of pearl inlay. Wow, that's awesome. And I bought it broken. I took a punt. I bought it broken. <laughs> and then luckily AP fixed it for me. <laughs> like a barn find or no. It was hardly a barn find <laughs> given how much money I had to bloody pay for it. But it worked out. It did really well. I've never, uh, I mean, they're very unusual, I think. Yeah. Especially, I've never seen one with this mother pearl inlay. No. I've only made 20 of these. It's okay, got a, it's okay. got, it's numbered on the back, actually. Wow. Super. Yeah. Wow, thank you. No, my pleasure. That's great. Um, okay, all right. Uh, now we have something very interesting next, don't we? I have never seen one of these. I'm, I'm very excited to see this one. Right, so we have a Frank Miller. Everyone knows who, you know, Frank. Good old Frank. Frankie boy is. <laughs> um, but this is a very early um, example, 1990, um, just when he was starting out. Um, the movement is an old pocket watch caliber that has been you know, converted. Um, and I mean, it's, it's platinum, it's heavy. It's, we've got um, a world, uh, world time uh, calibrated bezel. Uh, so you simply just you know, uh, ro rotate the bezel yourself. Um, we have a chronograph. Um, single button chronograph, excuse me. So operated through the crown. We have these uh, uh, officer style case with the screws. Um, and then on the back, <laughs> you've got a, a second uh, register. So with pulsation scale, um, it's aged and you can see there's some uh, sort of tarnishing mm. to the registers here. It's very easy just to, just to take that off. Um, I know that because um, when I was at Christie's, we sold a, a pocket watch uh, that belonged to James Wood Packard, um, a minute repeating Patek, and the it was very similar. Where the um, uh, the the, uh, the two tone part of it was very uh, tarnished, mm. um, and then I saw the watch in the Patek Museum. It was completely clean and gone, mm. um, and they said it was why didn't they asked us why didn't we do it before the sale? So mm. um, so anyway. Um, so, so yeah, so chronograph, so it's operated through the crown. Um, there we go. And there's a GMT on there as well, right? Yes, exactly. Sorry. So the um, crown, I guess there's a couple positions to the crown and it operates the GMT as well as the time. Yeah. So maybe, well, um, <laughs> These onion crowns crown. are tough. Though. It is very tough, yeah. Um, Man, it's beautiful. It is. It is. Really but, beautiful. You were becoming quite famous, I think, Mark, in this Talking Watches because the consigner actually said, you know, if you appear on Talking Watches, this has to be on there as well. Well, so. thank you for consigning this piece. We're really happy to see it because I think it, it deserves the attention. It's a fabulous piece. It is cool. And I think in the years to come, these early Frank Millers, there is, there is a lot of potential. Um, yeah. Just like Roger Dubuis, uh, yeah. Daniel Roth, uh, all those guys. I mean, I've never seen Gender. this combination of complications before. No, no, I've never seen one before either. It could be a, a you know unique piece. I mean, it's. Yeah. Um, it's interesting how it says just Frank on the front, not yes. even Mueller, just Frank. Yeah. Very cool though. It's cool though, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right, two more. Okay, so Let's Frank start with Mueller, this. Vianney Halter, Vianney Halter, um, you know, one of the leading independents. We have, um, this model is the classic. So it's uh, one of his earlier production pieces, um, inspired by the porthole of the captain's um, ship, uh, Nemo. Um, we have the contrasting white gold case with the uh, gold studs here to mm. give that look. Um, mm. um, and it was Captain, sorry, not Captain, it was Captain Nemo's uh, ship, the Nautilus, I guess. Mm. Um, and then if we uh, turn over the watch here, you see we've got this very unique to, to Vianney is the, the rotor, which doesn't obscure or cover the movement. Um, it sort of just sits on the outer rim 
and as you're wearing the watch, um, it just sort of oscillates back and forth. Yeah. So very sort cool. of peripheral rotor was not was only, was it's more common now, but it didn't used to be that common. No, either. not at all. Um, and as we know, you know, Vianney uh, back in the day, I mean, they, they were popular, but they were sort of like he had like a very like cult like following. Mm. But today, he's he's you know one of the leading independent makers. Yeah. Uh, very hard to to get his watches, and these have have risen dramatically in value as a result. Um, I think that it's limited to 250 pieces. Again, you can find it in white gold, pink gold, mm. yellow gold, um, with the mm. different things, but great watch. Uh, the size is lovely too. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Uh, I really love the, the, um, the perpetual that he did, you know, where it looks like, a, have, are you familiar with it? Where you have mm. the, the various dials, so it looks like um, ah, it's yeah, inspired yeah, yeah, yeah. by a dashboard. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. The crown is beautiful too on this. Yes. With those it really little... matches the, the case and everything. Yeah, kind so. of a steampunk look. I'm into it. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Last so but not least, right? Finally, we had to have a Rolex, right? We yes. can't talk about watches without a Rolex. So well, I have to say, this is also one of my favorites in yes. this upcoming auction. So we've got, um, so it's a reference 2508. Now the 2508 can be found in two sizes. Um, 35.2 millimeter or 37 and a half millimeter, which this is. Mm. Um, this is the most popular combination with the black lacquer dial, the over like sort of larger size case. Um, and this belongs to a collector who actually bought it at auction in the 1980s. Wow. He's kept it ever since. Um, the you know, they can either be super or they can be bad. <laughs> um, and, and this is which one? I think this is, is super. It's a great example. You, again, you've got the fat bezel, like when we were talking earlier about the, the 570. Uh, but the lacquer dial is, is, is really great. I mean, snap back, so they're prone to tarnishing, to oxidizing, to bubbling. But look at the crisp numbers on the case back. Um, and you've got the sort of olive type pushers. Um, it's it's really great and I like the hands too. Yeah. I've never seen that sort of I don't even know what the heck you'd call it. It's sort of like a spade hand and sort of not. Mm. Oh man, the color is beautiful. Yes, and this also has the additional um, uh, retailer signature, uh, retail by Bukhara, uh, and Bukhara. I think they started retailing Rolex in 1924. I think it was still retailing for them today, um, and I think Bukhara may be Rolex's biggest. Retailer. Wow. I think. Um, so, yeah, um, they sell the most watches uh, today for Rolex. So, very nice quality. Um, their price fluctuates really um, um, depending on how, you know, our Italian collectors. I mean, these are so, so popular in Italy mm. um, and in Asia as well. But I think, you know, Italians being the real gurus of watch collecting. Mm. Um, this sort of appreciated uh, there more than anywhere else in the world. So yeah, um, so yeah very nice. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a nice thing. Okay. All right, Sam. Cool. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for having me. It's been great as Man. always. The pieces um, are awesome. I wish you the best and I wish the consignors the best as well thank you, with, the, uh, with the auction tomorrow and day after. Super. All right, we'll okay. link it in the description of this video. And uh, if you guys have any questions, you want to know more, please let us know. All right, that's it for now. Okay. Thanks for watching. Thank you.